So your, your stage name is Pollo Del Mar. I'm Pollo Del Mar, Chicken of the Sea. That's right. <laughs> and uh, what, was the, what was your first dress up experience? Oh God, I, um, I think my first dress up was probably when I was very young, you know. Um, and I don't, I, I don't know, I, it's really hard for me to remember that. I know that my first dress up experience as an adult came, um, you know, I, my first real dress up experience was when I was in eighth grade. And I went for Halloween um, as Boy George. And it was, it was at the time, it was at the height of Culture Club and um, it, was, it was the only socially acceptable way to do drag because everybody was under the impression that he was straight. Yeah, right. So I dressed up as Boy George because I couldn't, I really wanted to be Madonna, but that would have been just too obvious. So um, that was my first one. Uh, and then I started doing, I dressed up in drag officially when I was probably like 25 or 26 for the first time. But then I didn't do it for years. When, when you first learned about drag, was that like after you did your Boy George? Or you probably knew about that before because Boy George is kind of a little bit draggy. Yeah, um, I don't know. I didn't, I think that the, when I was first learning about what being gay was about, I think that there was a close association with drag at that time because so many people like in the straight community think everybody who's gay automatically does drag. And that's uh, a marriage that, of course, I'm not comfortable with because not everybody who's gay, of course, does that. And um, and in fact, I know some drag queens where it's just straight, which is really interesting. Thing. So I guess that maybe around that time, when I was, at the time I was probably like, maybe 12 or 13, so I guess. And um, who, who's your inspiration, or who are your inspirations? I, performance. Performance inspirations locally. Um, in the San Francisco scene, there's some pretty amazing people. I love uh, Peaches Christ. Peaches Christ is phenomenal. She's larger than life, and she um, has a very defined character. And she, it, she, well, and I also know her, and she's an incredible person behind the scenes. So that is really inspiring to me. Um, and. Uh, Precious Moments is a former Miss Tranny Shack who is amazing. Uh, another individual who is a friend of mine uh, behind the scenes and, and, and an inspiration. And what I love about Precious's performances is they have that um, performance art aspect of them. It's not always about, the, it's certainly not about female impersonation, but it, it is drag and it's art and it's amazing. It's beautiful. And um, how do you, how would you say um, Tranny Shack compared, and the whole drag scene basically in San Francisco that's kind of spawned off of it? compares to like traditional drag or what people, you know what, it's blurry and I don't know how to make it unblurry. But I'm just basically gonna use your audio, I think. Okay, sure. I'm not, but um, so I'm just gonna record your audio. Oh, there, what do you know? It went, it went clear for a second, there we go. Oh wait, I think I need to, okay. I don't fucking know, okay. Um, so how do you think, how, how do you think that Tranny Shack compares? I mean, I think there's like a world of difference from any drag show that I've right. seen before. So, um, I moved here from Cleveland, Ohio, uh, nine years ago, just about nine years ago. And the drag scene there is very, very different. The drag scene in the Midwest, and particularly in the South, is all about female impersonation and what is called high camp drag, which means that they frequently they'll impersonate a celebrity. They come out dressed as Cher, or they come out dressed as Barbara Streisand, or they come out dressed as somebody. And um, it's about female illusion. And in San Francisco, not unlike New York, in a few other places, around the country and around the world, they do, I consider this, what I do certainly is drag. There's, I, my look has softened in the last year and a half that I've been doing it, and um, I'm prettier and less outrageous, less, uh, we'll say more RuPaul and less divine, you know, um, but at the same time, uh, around, the, around the rest of the country, I suspect that if they came here, I know when I first came here and the first time I went to Tranny Shack and we were on this, I saw these people on the stage doing what we do, I was aghast. I was like, what is this? This is an abomination, you know. Um, and now I appreciate it so much more. In my opinion, it takes a great deal, much more creativity to do what these people do. To tell this amazing story, to, to be this wild character, to take on all of this just um, outrageousness and embody it in a way that they don't in the Midwest. And what I think they do is amazing as well because to be able to paint and look like that is amazing and one thing that I would say that to clarify as a performer that I love about here is um, unlike some of the places in the Midwest it goes it moves into the area where these people have to almost live as a tranny they, they have to live in many cases as a woman they've shaved off their eyebrows or they've gotten implants and and I live a very full and rich life as a man and on Tuesday nights or Saturday night or whatever night I'm working uh, and out supporting my community 
I can put on my outfit and I can be Poyo Zalmar and I can embody this wild and outrageous personality that I don't get to be every day and then I can go home and take it off or after the performance is done I can take it off and I can be Paul again. So Awesome. And uh one last question is uh, what what how does your family feel about your performance? Do they do they know about it? And <laughs> well, it's interesting because when I first came out to my mom um, a number of years ago, she said, Paul, I don't mind if you're gay. That doesn't, you know, like I love you and I support you, but I think it'd make me real uncomfortable if you're a drag queen. So don't be a drag queen. <laughs> and I was like, at the time I was like, no, no, mom, that, you know, that wasn't something that I'd even thought about doing, to be honest. Um, and then years later, obviously, uh, probably about seven, eight years later, um, I wanted to, for a number of personal reasons, I had left the club scene my, and, and I wanted to go back into it, but I didn't feel comfortable going back into it as the person, you know, as, as in my male incarnation. Paul did not feel comfortable, and I wanted to be able to go back, and I found that drag allowed me to go back in a safe way that I didn't feel intimidated by the body Adonis is. But it was it was just a great and fun opportunity. What's going on? <laughs> and now I have groupies. Yeah. What's going on? Here? Right. You're in a movie, a school movie. What are we gonna do? <laughs> oh my goodness! Is this gonna get dirty? Good. It was poor night. Oh my god. So it's poor night. It's all about pit. Thank you. What's your name again? Kate. Kate. Kegel Kate. 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 Kate